the, the lobby area, the glass doors. On the right side, just, just walk by the glass doors, you're going to see the room that's okay, back there. All right, good morning, everybody. I'm Mr. Jones. I'm from Chicago. My folks are from Mississippi, Mississippi. And once again, I'm glad to be here. I would like, can you guys sit right in here? Come on. Just sit right in here. You can leave yourself. Just sit close. We'll make this a nice little intimate presentation. And my goal is to not bore you, but to engage, of course. You got your hat? Jacob, you got your hat? In the room. Get your hat in the top. All right. There's going to be a section in here where I'm going to ask you all, sit, sit, my daughter, come sit right over here. <laughs> come on, we're going to make this an interactive piece. And then I want to find out who you all are and where you all are from. If you are a member of a particular social group or a music component, athletic component, I'd like to know that also. All right, we're going to start with my daughter the other day. No, 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 not, not the Just tell me who you are right quick and where you're from. Oh, well, I don't have to ask you. Not right now, right? right, right. My name is Sam. It's the R.I.G. I'm from the baseball. Okay. Any member of any social, civic groups, athletic teams, academic teams here? Yes. Um, I play softball. Uh, I'm Kappa Alpha. I'm from the NWA. Springs, all right. Any groups or committees? Okay, what year? Right. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. Chicago land. Tell me about you. My name is Marion. Okay, I'm from Chicago. And here I'm a junior. Mm -hmm. I'm part of a band. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. My name is Okay. We have Dr. Charles Hudson, uh, uh, retired Chicago Public School Administrator and uh, Physical Ed Specialist out of Chicago. So we are here on purpose. So I know what it's like when you have a special guest to come to class. Sometimes you use that as a go to sleep session and all that kind of stuff. But we're going to have a little fun and we're going to talk about the blue news and pretty much why the blues exist. So this lecture is called, or this class session is called, Blues as a Second Language, Pedagogy, Andragogy. Existence. All right, if I ask, are you ready? I would like for you all to say I was born ready. Are you ready? I was born ready. I know it's only the one and give it to me. Are you ready? I was, I was born, born ready. <laughs> all right. All right, so here, this is a little bit about me. I'm a graduate uh, of the University of Illinois at Chicago. I teach, I play, I do a whole bunch of other stuff, but the most important thing is that I am here with Professor Chen. All right, these are just some little housekeeping rules. You don't necessarily have to turn your phone off, but please turn your ringer off, and please let's not play on the phone except when it's time to look at you. the blues is coming. All right. Let's y'all just watch us a little bit of me and the man on television, about two and a half minutes, just so you can get an idea of contemporary blues, and then we'll build on this. Band, what is that called? Quartet. Trio. Okay. 
And when it's a blues based uh, guitar driven trio, it's called a power trio. Power trio. And one of the keys when you play with the trio is to play full so it doesn't sound like this trio. Yeah, my wife don't want me. So in the Chicago contemporary blues tradition, we dress up so that we're on, on stage on purpose. Thank you. 
one. There's one. Not one. 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 <laughs> all right. All right. You got a pie chopper back there. Uh, all right. Mm. Now, stay standing. Now, we do this all over the world. We do our musicians' pledge. And we do this because, as musicians, we are purposeful people, so on and so forth. Am I straight to the college? We're on, we on, we on almost TV. All right. Where are you from? Memphis, Tennessee. All right, all right. Yo, yo, yo. All right. All right. This space off call the spot. Repeat after me, loud, proud, long, and strong. I'm waiting on you, brother Chapman. Why not you do it? Uh, loud, proud, long, and strong. I am. I am. Somebody. Somebody. I am. I am. A musician. A musician. A musician is a person that makes music. A musician is a person that makes music. A good musician listens. A good musician listens. And a musician that listens learns. And a musician that listens learns. And a musician that learns earns. And a musician that learns Very good. At ease, at ease, at ease. You can have a seat. Uh-huh. Where did I sit my room? Oh, here it is. Right here. What's your name, brother? Okay, Wilson. Okay, Mr. Wilson. Brother Wilson. How you doing, sir? Okay, where you from? Tampa, Florida. Okay, what's your name? DJ. All right, all right. Now, I didn't get to weed. Got introduction. What's your name? Where you from? East St. Louis. East St. Louis. All right, all right. Cool, cool, cool. So we got the play. So we're going to do a little icebreaker here. And I'm going to call these characters. We did Lift Every Voice and Sing. We did the Musicians Play. I'm going to give you these characters. And I want you to bring these characters to life. And all you do is you read them. I need a buddy guy. Who wants to do a Rick and Very good. I the Cox. I want them. Very good. Howlin' Wolf. Who wants Howlin' Wolf? Who wants Howlin' okay. Who wants Coco Taylor? Very good, Coco Taylor. All right, Sonny Boy Williams. Little Ruby Brown, Willie Mae Big Ron McCoy, and Billy Holiday. There you go. Put it again, one. Put your hand up. My drum back there. There you go. All right, everybody. Okay. Now, this is what we're going to do. Did everybody get one? Mm -hmm. Okay, I want my rhythm section. Come on up here right quick, my rhythm section. And we're going to face y'all. I got a good top picker. Was it JD? Yes. JD? Come on, JD. You tuned? Is it a good top tune? Okay, Brad. All right. So I'm just going to have him just play a little groove. Let's just do just something in the key of G. Okay. All right? And you only have to stand up. I want y'all to bring these characters to life. For example, if I was Muddy Waters, JD, you can plug right on. You can take. Oh, you got it. Okay, cool, cool. Bring your, bring your, uh, okay, you're going to plug in and I'll plug you up while you're doing that. That's some bass. Mm -hmm. Okay, so check this out. Tell you what, we'll, uh, 
Hey, can you play the kivi? Just put some. Play that, play that, play that, play that. One, two, one, two, three, and. Chicago. I was conceived in Mississippi. 
of two Mississippi parents. My older brothers played the blues, and any of you all who are older, little brothers, or little sisters, or little cousins, or play cousins, you can kind of identify with this. You really want to be like them, and you really want to be with them. So when my brothers would leave their equipment, they would say, don't bother it. And you know what happened. Maybe yeah. some years later, I'm still playing the blues. So of course, they didn't have a crystal ball, and they didn't know that I would be playing the blues all of my life I'm teaching about the blues because it was something really that just happened. So my mission is to preserve, perform, and present the blues and give the blues an academic home within my heart and to try to uh, promote the state of Mississippi, you know, the home of the blues in America with West African roots. Uh, from Mali, everybody say Mali. Mali. Okay, so when you all get ready to do your independent research as musicians, you need to be aware of the root of the root. So that's one of the things that we'll talk about today. So uh, the blues is the root. If I say the blues is the root of American music, can we come back and say happy folks up there? Yes. What row? Uh, 118. Okay, cool. Um, if the blues is the root of American music, I would like for you all to just think, and there's no wrong answer, so I want you to think about what are what what is a form of music that comes from the blues. Once again, the good professor here says the blues is the root of American music. Bass man, well, jazz. Jazz comes from the blues. Let me kick on my other door another day. Holly Springs? Mm -hmm. All right, Holly Springs. Give me a form of music. Come from the blues. I can hear you. All right, what does R&B stand for? Rhythm and blues. Very good. All right, give me another one. My other door the other day. What kind of blues has a, a, a Eastern European and African bass form of music? They would sometimes call it white folk blues. So, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. give me some more. My door over here. Holly Springs also? Is this Holly Springs? Give me one Holly Springs. I ain't going to ask you no more than that. Huh? Y'all know? Give me one. What, what type of music do you like? Feel uh -huh. Hip hop, very good. Gospel, that's a good one. Gospel comes from the blues. Why? Sometimes people confuse gospel with quote unquote spiritual music. Gospel music was created by a man named Thomas A. Dorsey from Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia. They say poems. Mm -hmm. So, who created gospel music? Thomas A. Dorsey. And why does Mr. Jones and all the people that write all those books say that gospel comes from the blues? Because Thomas or Thomas A. Dorsey was a blues man and he played with a young lady named. Ma Rainey. Say Ma Rainey. Ma Rainey. And she was considered to be the first queen of the blues. Who was Ma Rainey? The first queen of the blues. He was her piano player and he was her band leader after a tragic accident where he lost his wife and, 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 and their son. I think it was unborn son or something. He turned his life over to the Lord. And the thing that makes us snap our finger when Kirk Franklin and all those folks are playing that really good gospel, uh, can't spiritual sins is because. It's got that blues, beat, blues feel. As a Professor Chapman was saying earlier, you know, if, if it's, it's old baby on Saturday night, no law on <laughs> Sunday. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna keep going. What is the blues? What is the blues? You all have a sheet, and I want y'all just to take these with you, and then at some point in time today, I want you to write down with this marker, and you can do it as we do in the class without disrupting the class. One word, what is it? Everybody get one? If you didn't get one, please put your hand up. Okay. A base man in Chicago, give them one right there. All right. Here you go. And make it real big, and then I'm going to take a picture of it. I'm going to put them on the floor and take a picture of it at the end. Okay? So I have, and everybody has some sort of philosophy on what the blues is or what hip hop is. So my long philosophy is the blues is an indigenous African American. Oh God, blah, blah, blah. What does indigenous mean? Indigenous from that area. From, from a particular area, from a particular place. Very good, very good. And then I shorten that philosophy, and I say the blues is freedom. Willie Dixon, who is from Vicksburg, Mississippi, he was one of my mentors, he said the blues are the true facts of life as expressed in word and song. Almost for every person that thinks about what the blues is, those folks have their own philosophy of it. 
So, we talk about the blues being the root of American music. It's always important for us to realize when you think about music, and we'll talk about hip hop, which is modern day blues, because blues was pretty much uh, a tape recorder right. before a tape recorder existed. So it recorded what was going on in the towns and the itinerant blues men and women, they would take stories from town to town, place to place, because there was no internet, there was no TV, so on and so forth. So what does itinerant mean? If I say somebody was an itinerant musician and they traveled from place to place, what does that mean, itinerant? I just gave you the answer. A mm -hmm. person, mm -hmm. almost like a grill, they would travel, mm -hmm. you know. They would travel from town to town and they would do stories like uh, the good professor, they, they had a, a bunch of songs about Natchez, Mississippi town. Did you hear yes. about the burning? The popular one that I heard was Howlin' Wolf. That's how I knew about the fire. And his, his folks are from there, so he knew a lot more than I did. And we got that, for the most part, oral tradition and song. It's always important to remember, and we'll use hip hop as an example, that there are almost always at least two components in any form of music. So when you think about blues, you think about hip hop. We say hip hop, and what's the other word that we put with hip hop? Hip hop and what? Right. Hip hop and rap. Very good. So hip hop is what? Hip hop. What would, what would hip hop be? It would we'll portray my two words. Hip hop would be the culture. Hip hop would be the culture, and rap would be the music component. All right, when you take sociology, how many people took sociology or psychology classes? Okay, what, and what is culture? Is culture race? A culture is culture is like shared beliefs and uh, culture, ideas. Culture is learned, yeah, learned, learned behavior. For example, we'll use uh, uh, I'll use Eminem, not picking on Eminem or anything like that. I'll use him. Grew up in Detroit. We know from his protective coloration that he is not, you know, a black person, right? Mm -hmm. But culturally, he's a brother. Mm -hmm. Grew up with black people. You know what I mean? If the Ku Klux Klan knock on the door and look at him, he's not a brother. Mm. But culturally, he is a brother because culture is what? It is learned that my Kappa brother said, well, give it to him again, um, Brother Wilson. Well, it's shared beliefs and ideas. Exactly. So if you, you know, if you want to study Irish folk dance and you learn how to do it and you weren't born in Ireland or in Bridgeport or Canaryville, mm -hmm. culturally you're Irish. Mm -hmm. Okay? It has nothing to do with quote unquote race, so always remember that. So there are always two components. And with the blues, is the, what are some of the cultural things that do with the blues? Just think about some things that you and Big Mama and Big Daddy have going on in your lives, positive things. How about on Sunday, when you come home from church, what happens? Dinner. You, then you eat? And what, what, what's the main staple that you're definitely going to have on Sunday? Fried what, chicken. Fried chicken. Friday night, what you gonna have in a traditional, stereotypical Catfish. black day? Catfish. <laughs> right, right. Then when you get popular, you start eating all kinds of stuff. Then you have me some uh, 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 Mediterranean sea bass. You know, but that ain't what from Big Mama House, and so that's a whole nother cultural thing for you. Catfish, buffalo. <laughs> in Chicago, when I miss the roots, we only thought it was two pieces of fish, catfish and buffalo, and then if you had a a little more sophistication, you got some perch. You know. <laughs> All right? Okay, cool. And obviously, it's the, move, uh, the music component. This is a quote. I want somebody to read this. I'm going to read it first, and I want somebody to give this back to me. B.B. Uh, King, this is from a song. Everybody wants to know why I sing the blues. Remember, I told you there are a lot of us who have philosophies, and you will have a philosophy at the end of this piece. I'm going to get you one word. B.B. King said, when I first got the blues, they bought me over on the ship. Men were standing all over me, and Lord, a lot with a whip, and everybody wants to know why I sing the blues. Mm -hmm. I've been around a long time, and yes, I've paid my dues. All right, who wants to who wants to read that first? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, when I first got the blues, they brought me over on a ship. Men were standing over me, and a lot, Lord, with a whip, and everybody wants to know why I sing the blues. Okay, now let's read that together. One, two, three. When, when I first, first got, got the blues, blues they brought me over on the ship. Men were standing, standing over me, and the Lord loved with the will. And everybody wants to know why, what? why I sing the blues. Very good, very good, very good. My short philosophy from the long one is the blues is freedom. JD, what is the blues? Give me one word. What is the blues? 
So, what is the blues? Struggle. Struggle, what is the blues? Freedom. Say it again? Freedom. Freedom, what's the blues? Hot Springs, so, no, y'all gotta give me another word now. We're gonna start over. If they say your words, you got, oh, you did say that, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. We're gonna start over. JD, loud, proud, long, strong, what is the blues? So, what's the blues, Chicago? Bass. Bass, what is the blues? Love. Love, what's the blues? Life, very good, what's the blues? Huh? Say another word. You get two words because you had it down. What's the blues? So, give it to what's the blues? And then give me another one. What's the blues? No wrong answer. Trump, very good. Blues. Uh, I'll put freedom, but good, that's cool. That's what's blues, baby. We're going to come back to you. Otherwise, it's summer school. Mm. What, what's blues? Huh? Comfort. Comfort. What's blues? I put a form of communication. Give me one word. What is blues? Mm, Just take one word of it. Say communication. What is blues? Communication. Right on. What's blues? Blues is cool. Blues is cool. Holly Spring, did I get you? Okay. Doc, what's blues? Life experience. One word, Doc. What's blues? Experience. Experience. <laughs> Doc, what's blues? Striving. Very good. All right. Give yourselves a round of applause, y'all. So I'm going to show you all this little clip of, uh, we talked about Eurocentrics and being interested in the blues. This is a film, I think this actually is a film, a student film that was done at Columbia College where I teach about Eurocentrics wanting to play the blues. I believe this is the clip. Okay, I'm going to, can I turn one of the lights out? Yes, sir. Okay, if you got some popcorn, you can eat it. All right. <laughs> This was set in a, a racist area, set to be in a racist area in Chicago land called Cicero. I play a character called Fingers, who was who this character wanted to be like. Devil's Crossroads. Hmm. There are a million of these sold and sold to the devil's story. been playing my guitar when I ain't looking. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Fingers, I'm, uh, I'm really sorry, but I'll tell you what. How about you? Oh, me. A pair of whiskeys and we'll call it a Sure.
see it in your face. Thank you. No matter how hard I practice, I okay. That's your problem. It's all about fear. What do you mean? In order to be a good blues man, you got to feel the blues. Not me. I feel the blues every day. How do you do that? Remember I said you could. Now look, since you seem kind of eager, how about you go see a friend of mine? Your friend? I want you to go down to the old grain silo on 69th. I want you to tell him something. Fingers told me that you that I that you could help me learn the blues. <laughs> you want to command a room? Yeah, girls just picking the sweat right off, you know. You want to be kind of good. It makes God nervous. Give me something, boy. Nah, I can't give you something. Like what? A deal. Teresa.
and blues, and we think about music songwriting structure, you have subjects sometimes that are polar opposites. Comedy, tragedy, love, lust, freedom, bondage. Nowadays, we have songs of protest, songs of acceptance. How we doing on time, Doc? This, this was a, this. About 20, about 15, 20 minutes. 20 minutes, okay. This is a little song that I wrote in uh, answer to the Sam, the brother George Floyd, to that piece. I know you all were probably like in high school age when this went down. As a, a black man, as a black man in Chicago, as a dark black, dark skinned black man in Chicago, I've had run ins with uh, police uh, before and did nothing. And I used to tell people, you know, I got stopped today, and people would always, you know, either people believe you or they don't believe you. And a lot of times, even if they do believe you, you're victimized. Well, Fernando, what did you have on? Mm -hmm. What were you driving? Mm -hmm. You know, you, 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 man, you shouldn't have tents on your Cadillac. You know, you shouldn't have bulbs on the Cadillac. Man. Now, what were you doing in that neighborhood? Wasn't riding dirty. Weed wasn't coming out to the car. Hip hop wasn't even blasting out. Profile, right? A couple of years later, 10 years later, after I had my sister get stopped, I started seeing it on television. Black men being stopped, black women being stopped for nothing, and accidentally getting killed. In Chicago, white folk never accidentally get killed by the police. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a, is a little short song. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just play a little bit of it, and then I'm gonna show you how some of our students interpreted it for going from blues to hip hop. It says, the blues never sleeps nor does it rest. It's cool to get killed on TV, but wrong to protest. Go to work early when you work downtown, but you're the last one to get promoted, if ever, when you're born, when you're born too brown. white and blue. Some of my students, they made a student film and they made a hip hop piece. Uh, this was also one with a Colin Kaepernick. This my piece was part of a trilogy. It was a poem, it was a piece of work, and, and that song there. The blues never this group, hip hop group is called Mother Fortune. It's a multicultural uh, it hip hop band. It's cool to get killed on TV. But wrong to protest. Forty acres and a mule, twenty diamonds and some jewels. All we want is up for shot. All we want is something new. I ain't singing no more hymns. I ain't looking. 
taking at my scars Cause they don't trust the people that are darker than my heart The American dream is made from the red of my blood The white hot hate plus the blue kiss that floods The basement in Katrina and here's your new white papers It's so glad to meet you, sheesh I don't wanna complain, I'm demanding for change I'm not looking for sunshine when I really need rain The thunder like in pain, hurricane and dismay The city shot shining over the grave He shouldn't have ran, there was something in his pocket He did have a record and the cop is a talking He was a bad apple in a dirty rotten barrel As they protect the wretch of the black people eating metal Whether it's from the water or whether it's from the gun If you were born brown then all you do is run So how do you all feel, this is the blues, how do you all feel as, as kids of color, young folk of color, when you're uh, falsely accused of harassing your college and still get stopped, still get profiled? How do you all feel? How did you all feel about the George Floyd piece? How did you all feel about the Kaepernick piece? How do you feel uh, being really good at what you do and not getting a shot? Write about it, protest, know your value, don't spend your money places you don't have to spend. Keep the door open for those to come and protect each other, so on and so forth. All right, now we're gonna light the mood for a moment. I wanna get uh, uh, three people just to come on up here. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna play College Jeopardy. And let me get, can I get three people? Let me pick three people that feel like they never get picked. All right, I got new. Pick two people. Pick two. Pick on. I want to say pick. Pick on two people that never do anything, Mr. Wilson. Mm -hmm. Is that Memphis? Memphis. Yeah, Memphis. And that's Memphis, baby. Yeah. Love the whistle. And maybe she don't do that. All right, come on up here. All right, let's give them a round of applause, y'all. Clap, 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 clap. All right. Are y'all ready? Okay, I want you to use I want you to use I want you to use your, your smartphone. And I want you to well I tell you what, use your use your blues placard here. Alright. And you can grab a pen and uh or that marker. Oh, your marker and, and I'm gonna give you guys a chance. Broke. Somebody broke. Oh you probably pulled out the thing. Yeah. It, it didn't break. It was uh it? that was a test of honesty. <laughs> All right. Now, who is anybody here in mass communication? Oh, right. Or broadcasting? Okay, you want to be the host, Big News? Yeah, host. Okay, you're going to be the host. All right, so you're going to be like Alex Trebek, uh, who's no longer with us. So come on, so you're going to read this piece here. All right? Ladies and gentlemen, so he, he's got to get some, some theme music. JD, play me a little theme music right now. <laughs> Give me a little theme music. Okay. Another name, JD. That's the theme music player right there. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, something. Something, All right. Funky. something funky. Yeah, something funky. All right, now, Mr. Wilson just got out to class, and we're going to bring you in right in. You come running in, because uh, this is your TV show. All right. And I'm going to be the I'm gonna be the director, so when I put my hand up like this, I want y'all to clap and act a fool. All right, just give me something funky, anything. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from over there, it's the Mr. Wilson Jeopardy Show. Yay! Come on, clap, 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 clap. Some open remark, Mr. Wilson. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank y'all for coming to the show. We're about to go and get started with Jeopardy. All right, here we go. This is Russ College Jeopardy with Mr. Wilson. One more time. 
Mississippi has been called the most southern place on earth. All right. Let, let me hit it one more time. Don't y'all look. Okay, there you go. Keep it like that. All right, start right. Start right. Start right. Oh, start right. On the back of that, you get your answer. Yes, your. Oh, let me finish. Okay, somebody get a pen. Okay, we're going away. Oh, All right. We waited. How many tuna fish sandwiches did you wager, Miss Two of them. None? Okay, how much did you wager? What did you wager? What's your answer? Country Hills. Yeah, pick one of them now. What, what did you pick? All right. Read it again, Mr. Wilson. This distinctive northwest section of Mississippi has been called the most southern place on earth, northwest Mississippi. All right. We wagered one tuna fish, two tuna fish sandwiches, and no tuna fish sandwiches. All right. The answer is, what is the Mississippi Delta? Give them a round of applause, y'all. Hey. Now, Mr. Wilson, we got one for you, Mr. Wilson. Give them one, Mr. Wilson. We appreciate y'all. We appreciate y'all. Right on. Let's hear it for the Mr. Wilson Jeopardy Hour. The five hour. Take a bow, y'all. Take a bow. All right. Now I'm going to play, I got at least five, six minutes, right, Doc? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to play a song uh, called The Blues Spares None, and then I'm going to take questions and answers. The reason that I'm on campus as a guest of Professor Chapman, we have a blues camp audition tomorrow for kids uh, 18 years old and under for beginner, intermediate, and advanced players. And um, we'll be back in the summer. In June. Oh, that's so event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. had the whole slide. I had to put the flyers around. Cool, cool. I talked to, I'm trying to think of the brother, your advisor's who? Um, who's, who's Paul it? Harris. Paul Harris. Yeah, because yeah, he's yeah. going to, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, uh, uh, to the C. Rodge Wilson. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. This song is called The Blues Spares None. The structure of this song is an eight bar blues. Normally, you will hear 12 bar blues. I'm from the 
That's a, I've never been asked that question before out of a lot of interviews, and I appreciate that. Some of us people ask you the same thing over. But where are you from? And you spent 30 minutes talking about something that's on page one of your bio. Mm -hmm. uh, give me some more. Sir. Yes, beautiful from Holly Springs. What made you choose to be a Kappa? You know what, Dr. Charles Hudson in the back, he says that Kappas are born. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and I, I really think that I, yeah. and, you're born to be a Kappa. Yeah. But uh, uh, coming up on the south side of Chicago, I lived on the same block with Cecil Parti. And you'll see, I, I saw a lot of great guys, and then it's like, man, what do they have in common? And then I saw, I was a ball player, and I saw the boys that were uh, maybe about four years older than me. They were playing like like uh, Yogi and, and Smokey, and they went to Drake, our Omega chapter. And then you see the boys when they come back, and they had on the, the what well, we, we called the red and white back then, what we thought was like crimson and cream. And it's like, man, that looks so cool. And you look at how the girls respond to them, and how smooth they are, and how society responds to them. And you know, it jumps out of your mind. Then you get to college, and you see the guys online, and it's like, then you see how the girls respond to them, and you see how they respond. You see how the, the alpha males respond to the member of the Cap Alpha South campus, and you say, man. And then it goes back to, man, Cecil Parti, the pharmacist, what we call Doc, Dr. Jackson, he's the one. And it's like, man. And then, you know, guys, they come, if they think you're cool enough, then they come to recruit you. And I have two Kappa stories. When I was, I was online in undergrad and my mother got sick, so I had to get offline. And so then I ended up coming in through Chicago Alumni Chapter, first and foremost. So I have two Kappa experiences, uh, which is really great, the undergrad experience, the scroller mm -hmm. experience, yeah. and the grown man experience. And I, I love and cherish them both. And uh, I view it as like an award. When you win an award, Obviously, you got it for something that you did, but I feel when you win awards, you, you're proving the rest of your life that you deserve anything that you got. So, same being a member of Kappa Alpha Psi, uh, it's, it's not so much what I wanted to be before I was a member, but how I exemplify. You know, like when hopefully when people see me, I'll see Mr. Wilson and Dr. Hudson, and if they do identify us with a Kappa, uh, with a fraternity, because all group, group groups think that theirs is the best, and they should. You know, and then I'll, I'll ask people, I say, well, you know, what do I what do I look like if I don't have my coat of arms on? And they say, well, you look cool and smooth and stuff, you know. And I say, well, hey, that's, you know. So, but yeah, so that's that's a long answer. But uh, the thing I think I like most about being a member of Cap Alpha Psi is being able to mentor little boys through our Guide Right program. And just the fellowship, like just coming down here to Mississippi with my best friend and my mentor who is from He's from Morehouse, from Pacha, mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, and we met when I first started teaching, me, Brother Wilson, who's down here. It gives you something that you have in common. You know, I know the sister here that's a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha, she probably feels the same way. You know, um, in college, even if you don't pledge your fraternity or sorority, as an older black man, there's a band fraternity, Brother Chapman is, is, a, uh, is a member of a fraternity. Uh, Get involved with something, if it's the, the chess club or the chemistry club, because as you get older, you'll find stuff in common with people, and that makes the world smaller, just by, like I met my daughter today coming in through the thing, you know, and she, you know, saw me as an old man or whatever, <laughs> and I saw her little pink and green, so it broke, she was nice, she was sweet as she could be, because I had my hands full, and she got to a point. I saw her little pink and green tassels, so that gave me an opportunity to say, does that mean anything? And then she said, Alpha Kappa Alpha, something like that, you know. And then I said, well, I'm a Kappa man from Kappa land. And so she laughed. So then I had a, a friend in five seconds. I'm a, when you travel, even though I'm an old man, it's like I'm a kid, because I don't know where I'm at. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like four years old here. I go the wrong way and end up in Clanville. But just by, no, I'm, I'm serious, you know. So Brother Wilson, he'll probably say, hey, hey, Duke, did you have something to eat? Or something, and I said, no, and he'll probably say, well, go to JY, whatever, Catfish House or something. Hey, man, I got a sandwich. I'll split it for you. I'm going to look out for him. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to take him to the car and give him an extra T-shirt. I may never see him again, and he'll pass the pencil. I'm going to take a picture with him. 
and I'm gonna show all these other young guys that I'm cool because I got a little Kappa man that can shimmy and probably twirl games, you know. You know. So, but that's the, you know, and then we have a bond. All of us have a bond through this humanities class. So we have something in common. Okay. So uh, one more, and then I think uh, Mr. Chapman will I'll yield my time back to him. Any music questions? Well, thank you for that question, beautiful from Holly Spring. Mm, I like, uh, yes. Yeah, um, has blues been the only genre you really like work in? Yeah. You go. Will I see you again, superstar? Y'all come in tomorrow. Hey, get her number. And when I do the blue, what, what year are you in? He got my number. What year are you in? What oh, grade? Sophomore. Sophomore. What year are you in? Uh, I'm a uh, senior. You're a senior. I want y'all to help me this summer. Okay. I may even have a few bucks. Okay. 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 Right on. Right on. Okay. Right on. Right on. Right on. Give me. Okay. Uh, hey, look. I want to give y'all some posters before you go. Y'all take one of these posters, and I'll sign it for you. I'm gonna stick around. Uh, Mr. Chapman is going. Go. Hey, uh, Wilson. I did. Let me give you my number. Uh, y'all want to take a picture? I'll do that. Y'all made my day. Now I feel young in here. All right, so make sure if you have a scan, you scan, you don't scan, you will never hear. Y'all don't want to post it? Yeah, come get it. Here you go. Here you go, Hollis Frank. Good to see you, baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you keep that, man. Hey, yes, sir, yes, sir. Now, where's your hometown? I'm from Chicago, actually. What high school? I didn't go to high school in Chicago. I went to high school. I went to Beasley. Beasley? Oh, he went to Beasley. That's what Pam went. My mama taught there for about like 13 years. What's your mom's name? Uh, Crystal Cross. Okay. Well, that was the boys. Barbara Sizemore and Beasley? She's the principal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's the principal. Okay. That's, uh, that's the case. Uh, Carl Beasley. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Museum Morgan. Yeah, that's right. That has the border of Beverly. Mm -hmm. I'm here, baby. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. I thought you had eight more. It's like right off. They shot it. Who's there? Hi. Hi. Vanderbilt, uh, right there from, uh, I ask you a question, uh, St. Joachim's, you know what St. Joachim's uh, Catholic Oh, that's the school, the uh, church right, right, right next door. door. My boys went to St. Joachim's. Mm -hmm. That's right next door. Right. Right. Yeah, I know you, you keep you a little bit of a hot shot. Thanks for having me. They'll be here a lot now. Right, right. Yeah. 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 I was always feeling when he died. From
We so we ain't really been to major like we visited main college. We went to all the places that's kind of close to us, like Memphis, Okay. Okay. Right, let me get a picture with y'all. Oh, can I get a picture with y'all real quick? Oh, 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 yeah. Thank you. 